Welcome to our lecture online. I must say that in all the years that I've been teaching physics, and yes, that's been for quite a few years, I've never encountered a problem like this. Of course, we're talking about the JE advanced test questions, and so we should not be surprised. So, what is the question? Well, we're dealing with two trains and an observer. We have one train, S1, that's moving towards the stationary train, S2, at 180 kilometers, 108 kilometers per hour, and at one moment it is 800 meters away. An observer is moving in this direction at 36 kilometers per hour towards the stationary train, and at the moment, at the same moment that this train is 800 meters away, the observer is 600 meters away from the same train. Notice that they're traveling in different directions. Both trains make a sound at 120 hertz. And now they're asking, what is the beat frequency heard by the observer when the two trains are making that sound at the same time? So essentially what we need to do is we need to figure out the frequency observed from listening to this train and the frequency observed by listening to this train. All right, let's take the easy one first. Let's see what the, what the frequency is observed by the observer due to the, to the speed at which the observer reaches that train. Of course, the quick conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second, well, that can be done by dividing that by 3.6. So the numbers are kind of nice. This means that this is 10 meters per second, and this one here divided by 3.6, that means that this is 30 meters per second. They also told us that the velocity of sound is equal to 330 meters per second. So that would also need to be a given. All right. Let's now come up with the equation. We can see that the frequency observed, and we're going to do this one first right here, is equal to the frequency that's sounded times the velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of the source. Okay, right away the source in this case is not moving, so that goes away. The velocity, now we can plug in the numbers, so this is equal to 120 hertz times 330 plus or minus the velocity observer, which is 10 divided by 330. Now, plus or minus means, does the, does the observer hear a higher or lower frequency? Since the observer is approaching the source, the observer should be hearing a higher frequency, so that needs to be a plus. So essentially, this is 120 hertz times 340 over 330. Now what is the ratio of 340 over 330? The zeros can go away. You can see that 1 divided by 33, that's about 3%, and 3% of 120 hertz, that's about 3.6 hertz, so we see 123.6 hertz, because 34 over 33 is approximately 103% or 1.03. So we hear about a 3% increase in the frequency, about 3.6 hertz. We can round it off to about 124 hertz. All right, so that's the frequency observed by the observer due to this strain right here. But what about this strain? Well, notice that we have a 6, 8, 10 triangle, so to speak. Uh, we can also think of it this way. The closing velocity between these two would be the square root of the square of the closing velocity here and the closing velocity there. So what I'm going to do is that the closing velocity between O and S1, so the velocity between O and S1, is equal to the square root of 30 squared plus 10 squared, essentially. So that's a quick and dirty way to do that. So this is equal to the square root of 900 plus 100, which is equal to the square root of a thousand, and the square root of a thousand is approximately like 31.1 or 31.3 or something like that. Okay, so let's pick 31, close, close enough. So now what we're going to do again is we're going to do the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of observer divided by the velocity of sound plus or minus the velocity of the source. Now, of course, both the observer and the source are moving, but let's just combine it together into a single closing velocity 
just kind of assume that the observer is moving towards the source. It's roughly the same result in that the source isn't moving. Again, we hear a higher frequency, so this should be a plus. So that's 120 hertz times 330 plus 31. So who cares, 31, 31.3, 31 something like that, divided by 330. So roughly speaking, that's 120 hertz times 361 over 330. And notice that's about a 10% increase. So that would be equal to 10% of 120 hertz is 12 hertz or 132 hertz approximately. So we have 124 hertz and 132 hertz from the two different sources. And of course the beat frequency is going to be the difference between the two. So we can say that the frequency of the beat is going to be equal to 132 hertz minus 124 hertz. So that's about 8 hertz. And that's pretty close to the correct answer. Of course, without a calculator, it'd be hard to get the exact answer. But we're in the ballpark, and that indeed was an acceptable correct answer for this particular problem. Again, three minutes. You'd be hard-pressed to do it in three minutes, but that is how you'd want to approach it. That's still a very ugly eight. <laughs> There you go, beautiful eight. Mine looks like eight. All right.